And we're back. So we were talking about the creative process. The first stage was preparation. Second stage is incubation. Now, as I mentioned, incubation is kind of like setting aside something to sit and to kind of um, grow on its own in a warm environment. So incubation in this sense means getting away from the task of thinking hard about the issue um, that the creative process kind of requires a bit of distancing kind of like we're doing now with social distancing but more like distancing yourself from the problem once you've prepared I don't mean to just say like don't do anything but once you've put in a lot of thought effort preparation then it comes time to kind of walk away from it a little bit let your mind look at it from different angles subconsciously so incubation means like you know um, taking a break and you'll see that um, a lot of people come up with ideas in their sleep or as they're falling asleep like I used to always keep a pen and paper by my bed as I you know before I slept just in case I would you know, sometimes come up with good ideas as I was falling asleep and letting my mind drift. Um, you know, in fact, one of my best papers that I wrote for research, the idea came to me, like this major methodological kind of, you know, breakthrough came to me in my in a, in a dream, in my sleep. So it's not unusual, you know, and, and so, you know, maybe by sleeping or by doing some meditation or yoga, you know, falling asleep wherever you are, maybe doing some keg stands, although that is not, you know, something that I recommend. Uh, I would not recommend doing that. And I've never done that to just, you know, let you know. Uh, you know, the chairman of McCann Erickson said, I tell my creative people to use their talent and judgment to solve the problem because if the advertisement advertising isn't uncommon and imaginative, no one will like it, only your mother, and even she will get bored in time. The reason people often say they think of things in the shower is that it's the only time we allow our brains to relax and open up. We're so intense. We're so driven. We also drink a lot of water, because when you drink a lot of water, you go to the bathroom, and when you come back, you say to your partner, hey, I just got an idea. You know, this is actually quite common that in uh, advertising agencies they actually have a lot of fun types of break rooms you know um, game rooms uh, I think I mentioned that maybe I'm not sure if I did mention it this one agency in Istanbul when you walk in the front door you know it opens up into this immediately as soon as you open the front door you're you walk into like a gymnasium right with a a basketball floor it's like like a basketball court there's there's basketball you know backboards and in this huge room on one side is just a small reception desk you know it's dwarfed the reception desk looks kind of tiny and out of place in the middle of this huge room and you know opening onto this huge room or hallways like open hallways so people can stand on the you know and look out on who's playing basketball at any given time but the signal is that they're a creative agency because they give so much importance to creativity they they welcome this type of um, you know distraction so the point is you need some after you've done the initial um, um, preparation you, know, you need to set aside give your mind some time to relax and and to come up with ideas then there's the moment of illumination the kind of the you know lightning strikes the, the light bulb goes on uh you know the eureka moment if you will if you've heard of that you know eureka um and this is when you know the idea strikes and you know if you if you're smart you'll write it down uh but is that the end of the process no, of course not, because just because you've come up with an idea doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. And now we have to examine that and see if the idea really uh, does what it's supposed to do.
and we call that the verification stage. So um, I'll give you a, a kind of a story about, you know, there was a guy, he was um, smoking marijuana, you know, which also is something I don't recommend. But apparently this person was smoking and, uh, you know, he got the, what he thought was his most brilliant idea, right? He got this great idea and he wrote it down on a piece of paper. And then, you know, being, I guess, you know, having smoked a lot, he, he fell asleep. And when he woke up, you know, he was going about his business, you know, eating something, doing whatever. And then all of a sudden he remembered like, hey, I, I had this great idea. Oh, my God. You know, I, I forgot about that. And he ran and he... He finally, you know, he tracked down that piece of paper and he was so excited to see what was on that paper because he remembered it was, as he thought, the most brilliant, genius idea. And then he read it and um, and it said, there's a funny smell in the room. So the point is, not all ideas are brilliant just because it comes into your mind and you have to verify them. And this ROI Typically, we think of ROI as return on investment, but here we think of it, we're calling it relevance. What's the O stand for, you think? If you said originality, yes, you're right. Relevance, originality, and impact. So relevance means, you know, is it relevant to the target market? Is it relevant to the problem at hand? Originality just means, of course, is it, you know, fresh, is it unique, interesting, and impact, is it, you know, is it going to make the effect that you want it to do? Is it going to have a strong, persuasive effect, the impact? The main thing to consider is, you know, really, uh, this is going to, we'll talk about this later if you're evaluating, because verification is part of the evaluation of the creative output, is just to say, well, is it on brief? And we'll, we'll come back to that. Is it on brief? Does it address the issues, the points that you made in your brief to the agency? So typically what will happen is the agency will present you their work. They'll come and they'll, they'll show you like, hey, you know, they'll bring the, perhaps the writers, okay? They'll typically, they'll bring like the account executive, uh, maybe the strategy person and the people that wrote the actual script or the, made the ad, and they'll present you with their scripts. And they'll probably present, you know, a few different alternatives. If it's a television ad, they'll present two or three different scripts. So do you, you know, the question then is, do you give them your feedback then at that moment uh, after they've presented their ideas to your, to your marketing and brand team, right? You might be the brand manager, assistant brand manager, maybe some interns, maybe the marketing directors in the room. Do you give them your, your evaluation? And I would say no, now is not the time to give them this feedback directly because there's too much you know, um, social influence at work. You know, you've got the creative team sitting there. They feel like they've just given birth, right, to a newborn baby. And you don't, you don't call a baby ugly, at least not to the mother. So, you know, there's too much kind of pressure to try to give a positive evaluation. And also, you haven't really had a chance to think about it. Maybe you need to do some research and, and give the, you know, different scripts you know, to some research agencies and just test them with focus groups, perhaps, as a minimum, or at least circulate the ideas among your other team members, or at least take some time and think about it, right? But critically, you don't want to just say yes or no uh, to the agency right at that moment. So you want to just let them go away, you think about it, and then you let the brand team, you know, develop their response and maybe write them and say, look, this is what we thought was good. This is what we thought was bad. But, you know, it's not personal at that point. You're not seeing the faces of the creative team crumble when you um, shoot down their, their ideas and call their baby ugly. Do you need to pretest it? That's, that's what I was suggesting. You know, maybe you need to pretest the ideas. Because if you're making a, you know, a national ad campaign, you don't want to just jump and say, yeah, this is great. And, you know, you typically want, unless it's just, you know, a, a sure 
perfect ad and you know uh, just in your heart and in your guts that it's going to be brilliant sometimes it's if you have the time and if you have the money you want to just pretest to make sure you don't do any big mistakes okay so now we've talked about the creative process let's talk about now the uh, various creative approaches right we called um, I think your textbook calls it the major selling idea the MSI the big idea the creative concept if you want to put it in different words so some common approaches um, we'll talk about four different different approaches first one we'll talk about is positioning if you remember when we talked about um, I think we talked about the message. Remember we had the lecture on source, message, and channel factors. When we talked about the message, we talked about different types of positioning strategies. We said, you know, we gave you kind of like this toolbox for position, positioning. We said, um, you know, positioning by competitor, com positioning by user, right, consumer or user, um, positioning by cultural symbol, by um, positioning by attributes and benefits by price and quality various positioning approaches right positioning was developed by jack trout and al reese uh, in the 60s um, and again i think i explained that at that time when they, they developed it it was more like a ladder you know like number one number two number three and that's how the positioning was in the mind of the consumer versus competitors how you know how the in the consumer's mind how the brand was ranked more or less in comparison to competitors nowadays it's come to mean a much broader idea including like just generally sort of like the brand's overall you know kind of brand image brand but not i don't want to say brand image because that's another common approach but it's kind of a slightly different orientation but anyway here's the you know positioning strategy for example, the most, um, probably the most famous positioning is by Avis rental cars. I think I gave you this example. You know, Avis is only number two, so we try harder. And that became their slogan over time, is we try harder. They explicitly recognize that they're not number one, they're number two. But they kind of turned it around and made it, almost like an advantage because it says you know they have to try harder they give better customer service avis we try harder um you know avis needs you you don't need avis avis never forgets this we're still a little hungry we're only number two in rent -a cars number two is in the avis manifesto we are in the rent -a car business playing second fiddle to a giant the, by the way, the number one is Hertz, Hertz rental car. The number one attitude is don't do the wrong thing, don't make mistakes, and you'll be okay. The number two attitude is do the right thing, look for new ways, try harder. So, again, look, if you find a cigarette button in an Avis car, complain, it's for our own good. We need your help to get ahead. We're only number two in rental car, so we have to try harder. So that's probably the most famous positioning campaign. Avis is only number two, but we don't want your sympathy. Uh, here's another great ad. I'll put this on uh, Ode to Class. Um, and it's actually in Turkey. I don't know if it was adapted from a global campaign, but it's, it's quite brilliant. Uh, and it's kind of positioning McDonald's coffee against Starbucks coffee or against, you know, um, upper, up, upscale kind of luxury brand, you know, cafes and coffee shops. But you can watch it on your own time. Another common approach is called the unique selling proposition, the USP. The USP, this was uh, introduced by Rosser and Reeves again around the same time as positioning basically the usp is what is the strongest thing that you can say about your brand the one strongest thing that you can say and you just make that clearly come out it's the unique selling proposition it's the strongest thing that is not just strong but it's unique to your brand if you have that that's extremely powerful if you can really have something unique 
and I'm out of time. See you soon.